Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there this morning, having a great start to your day, and a fantastic week out there so far. Thank you all for tuning in this morning as we try to figure out what's going to happen weather-wise for your Thursday. We'll get it all figured out for you folks. I'll be honest, there's nothing huge to really talk about, which is good news. It's nice to have a little break from any kind of craziness in the weather world. Um, especially, you know, just for anybody that could potentially be impacted by that crazy weather. But even for me, just discussing it, um, you know, honestly, you know, it's been so crazy this month in September. Uh, the growth has been awesome on the channel, but it takes a lot of time, obviously, when there's a huge topic to really latch on to. So it's been a breath of fresh air, especially with being sick, uh, to, <laughs> to not have to make 30 to 40 minute videos breaking it down. Of course, I don't have to make those long videos but i can't help myself i just get to rambling and talking and next thing i know i look down the video ends at 35 to 40 minutes so um nothing too crazy to talk about we'll give you an update on the tropics for the second half of the video too um and get you guys on your way i want to give a birthday shout out to jacob he is turning eight years old today just want to say happy birthday man chances are if you're tuning into this channel you have an interest in the weather so i just encourage you to keep on chasing that interest if it is your interest if it is your passion um, and just want to say happy birthday, man. I hope you have an awesome day and uh, I appreciate you tuning in. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put those in the comments below. And if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And uh, I really appreciate everybody who continues to tune in, even in these uh, slower times. So my clicker is not working this morning and that's okay because there's nothing to really point out much. Uh, we do have some heavy rain falling in Kentucky, so a lot of folks are waking up to just uh, just a, a dreary Thursday start. We even have, what is that, a flash flood warning here in western Kentucky. Some of these storms have made it all the way into northern portions of Tennessee. Still got this ripe tropical air mass into the Gulf of Mexico. You're waking up to a steady or even heavy rain around the Miami region. It's definitely raining a lot in the Florida Keys. And we even got rain off the coast of the Carolinas, the southeast coastline, but um, we'll see if some showers make their way all the way into eastern North Carolina a little bit later today. A little bit of shower activity and uh, what is that, northwest North Dakota, and then we're waking up to more rain in uh, western Washington State and um, northwest Oregon as we continue just to have a funnel of moisture that has been uh, really driving the weather throughout the entire work week. Storm Prediction Center is not really a whole lot to talk about, guys. Uh, just general risk. No severe weather expected. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't, we're not going to get a severe thunderstorm warning out there, too. It's, it's definitely possible we get those on general risk days. But in general, no severe weather really expected today. Definitely nothing too crazy out there. Uh, watches and warnings. And it, it, speaking of the excessive rainfall outlook, um, there's nothing really to mention with that either. That's why I didn't really pull it up. Flood watches are up, though, for southern Kentucky. Um, I think this has really driven off what really what's happening right now with a lot of rain falling. Um, but I don't think it'll be quite as widespread as we get into later this afternoon, this evening. But I do think there'll still be showers and storms around. We got some dense fog advisories up for areas of Indiana, Illinois, and then portions of Missouri and Iowa, and even up into the southwest corner of Minnesota, even some dense fog advisories in the southern New England. Um, but outside of that, that's about it. I can tell you guys, it's beginning to get really dry in portions of the southeast. Alabama, Mississippi, I was going to pull out uh, the drought monitor, but it is not updated since September 19th. And I, I mean, that was nine days ago. That's really old information. Um, hopefully they update that sometime today. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of areas that have not seen rain in some time. I mean, even in my neck of the woods, we haven't seen rain in almost 10 days, which uh, really isn't super long, but it's it's starting to even get dry in my neck of the woods. So um, the the bad thing is there's no rain expected for like Alabama, Mississippi, even areas of Georgia. No rain really expected um, between now and the foreseeable future. So things are going to get very dry very quick. Let me know what you guys are seeing as far as how dry it looks like out there. But as far as what could fall rain-wise for today, of course, we have that rain in Kentucky, northern Tennessee. Some of this could try to make it into eastern Tennessee today, but I think most of it would just kind of uh, re-energize itself into western Kentucky, could eventually make it all the way to Nashville, Tennessee, could have some rain in 
uh, northeast Kentucky today, some showers and downpours. But I think most of the action stays down here in Florida where we could have tropical downpours again. Some of these uh, showers and storms could be strong to severe. But other than that, I, you know, I don't think severe weather is going to be the heavy topic today in Florida. But definitely more downpours. Basically the same thing that you've seen over the last several days, well, the last few days in Florida. You're going to see it again down here today. Some showers could get thrown back into eastern North Carolina. A little bit closer look at Florida. This is around 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., lunchtime. Not a whole lot going on, but it could look different. And then we get into about 4 p.m. Here it goes right outside of Miami up to Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Fort Lauderdale, I can't talk. Up the Space Coast, uh, even some storm action between Fort Myers and and um, Tampa Bay. Speaking of Fort Myers, today is the one-year anniversary of Hurricane Ian making landfall. I know today is definitely uh, – I, I know you guys are thinking heavy on what happened. Um, I know you guys are still – there's still a lot of people that are dealing with insurance issues, and um, I've read it in the comments. There's still a lot of issues down here. So our, our thoughts and prayers are down for you folks, folk, folks especially for today. As uh, I know today is definitely an infamous day for sure. So hope you guys continue your recovery efforts as, as I know that things are, are still struggling down there. But today does mark that one year anniversary of when Hurricane Ian made landfall in southwest Florida. So we're no hurricane today, just dealing with these tropical downpours that's going to be around. I really think they could group up later this evening in the uh, southern half of Florida, the southern peninsula of Florida, basically Orlando Point South, really anybody could see some tropical downpours. And then it's going to gear up and, and crank up and do it again tomorrow. So uh, looking a little bit further north into the southern Apps region and just a closer look at these showers and storms in this region, we could definitely get some more re-energized um, um, energy, I almost said re-energized information into this region in western Kentucky central tennessee a little bit later today you guys could experience some storm activity but other than that uh, nothing too crazy as far as severe weather that's for sure rainfall for this between now and the next 24 hours most of this is falling right now but an additional half inch to inch of rain could fall and kentucky areas of extreme northern tennessee could get a quarter to a half inch of rain in nashville depending off some storms can work down that region up here in the northeast it's, it's a big question mark on what happens today all right, the HRRR model really likes the idea of a big push of moisture uh, moving into the Long Island, southern New England region a little bit later this evening. If this happens, expect a pretty soggy evening and overnight time frame for you folks from New York City up to Boston, these same areas that have already seen a ton of rain. Here it comes again. I mean, this, you know, it starts off as early as maybe 8 p.m., continues through the overnight hours is getting to 3, 4, 5, 6 a.m. and then waking up tomorrow morning, according to the HRRR model, to a ton of rain. Okay, now if we look at a closer look at this, here it comes. Okay, not a whole lot different, just a more zoomed in look. This is what it could potentially look like around 6 a.m. for your Friday morning, tomorrow morning. A lot of rain, burst of heavy rain. So, what is the HRRR model saying as far as rain between now and the next 24 hours? <clears throat> There's going to be some areas of over an inch of rain. Um, of course, it's really splotchy because it's the HRRR model. Um, but you compare this with what the National Weather Service is showing. It doesn't show really any rain for these areas that the HRRR model is showing over an inch of rain for. Um, this is a, a heavy topic in southern New England for a lot of weather enthusiasts and meteorologists. Um, is the differences between model guidance with this heavy rain uh, event that could potentially unfold. So I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how this unfolds for you folks. There's a chance you might not get as much rain. There's a chance you might get a few inches of rain. You guys don't need really any more rain up here. Um, but there, there's a solid chance at least some rain is going to fall. But there is definitely a, a tricky forecast, forecast ahead for you folks for sure. The South Central U.S., there really isn't a whole lot to speak on. Some storms are possible around the New Orleans area, the Bayou region. Could get some pop-up downpours in South Central Texas again today, this evening. But man, really, really isolated about nothing too crazy. Outside of that, could wake up tomorrow morning and around the Houston, down the Texas coastline to some storms making their way on shore. But outside of that, 
nothing to really speak on heavy topic wise um, still dealing with this weak upper low. So you guys in Ohio will be dealing with some scattered downpours, maybe some storm action, but I'm not expecting any of this to reach severe limits. These could wrap their way all the way into Southern Michigan could wrap back into extreme Eastern areas of Indiana. But I think overall, Ohio will be a state today, even into West Virginia, even into Western PA, where you'll see a lot of scattered showers and downpours out here. And I think they'll dwindle away as we're waking, making our way into a Friday morning for sure. Western US, uh, pretty much the same weather pattern with this upper trough draped across portions of the, of the Pacific and Western US. You'll continue just to deal with waves of moisture into Washington State and Oregon. These will eventually potentially make their way all the way into Northern Ohio. Just kind of a rinse and repeat kind of situation today. Uh, the snow levels are a little bit lower, so you're starting to see a lot more blue on your map up here in Washington State, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, if you live in these higher elevations <clears throat> that favor, of course, a, a mixed bag of precipitation, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, excuse me, um, then obviously that's when those microclimates kick in, and that's when it becomes difficult for me uh, to really speak on because they're, the microclimates are, are wild out here in the western U.S. as you know, you can go 30 miles one way and you're in a valley, 30 miles the other way, and you're, you know, 10,000 feet up in the air, which makes a huge difference when it comes to the weather. Temperatures, um, nice weather in the Ohio Valley, the northeast, down here, and to the south and the southeastern U.S. I mean, you still got this cold air damming event still ongoing. It was a picture perfect fall day, in my opinion, with cloudy, kind of dreary conditions here in the Midlands of South Carolina. I love days like that in the fall where we barely hit 72 degrees for a high. But unfortunately, if you're not a heat fan, you're not going to like the weather for today. All the way up into Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Mississippi, Western Tennessee, Louisiana, and certainly Texas. Well into the 90s today, if not the 90s, the upper 80s. Uh, temperatures out west, uh, a little bit below average for the, for the Pacific Northwest. And uh, just below average, just in general, but you know, you, you gotta, you gotta really look at your, stick to your local people when it comes to the temperatures out here. I always show this just for folks out west, but it's always difficult. Much cooler uh, through the high plains, the northern high plains, but the central and southern high plains. I mean, like eastern Colorado, 80s and low 90s, and uh, somebody might get to close to 100 degrees down here in the high plains in Texas and New Mexico. Uh, so uh, definitely continuing to be very warm. Um, we'll, we'll speak on this pretty quickly, but in a detailed manner. All right, this is technically Philippe. This is still an invest, has a 90% chance to develop. These look like they're combined together, right? They kind of are, and they could potentially become combined together. Um, but the models are really confused on what happens with this. Once upon a time, Philippe, was forecast to go completely out to sea. But you look at what the forecast is now. Look at this. I mean, there's confusion. It's saying it's going to be a jumbled up tropical storm that's going to kind of stay around the same area. Is it going to weaken into a depression? Uh, it was showing this cone all the way into Puerto Rico, almost into the Dominican Republic a couple days ago. Now it has it all jumbled up. Confidence is very low. And the reason confidence is so low on what Philippe's going to do is because of stuff like this okay but we'll start off tomorrow morning and it has this invest 91l which is the system furthest to the east becoming tropical storm rena okay and it still has philippe right here now look what happens all right rena still hanging around right here gets almost northeast of philippe then all of a sudden rena loses some steam and then philippe becomes the dominant the dominant system again becomes a strong hurricane, okay, a major hurricane at that, and then abruptly turns north and heads out to sea, and then whatever's left over arena right here completely fades into oblivion and doesn't do anything. All right, GFS wants Philippe to become a major hurricane, okay? European, what does this do? Well, it doesn't like either one of these systems, okay? It looks like it does develop Invest 91L into a tropical storm at some point based off the millibar number right here. But really, it doesn't show much support for either one. It fades both of them away by the time we get in the next week. And uh, yeah, 
the good news is about all this is it, it doesn't look like it's going to affect anybody. Um, so we'll have to watch though. There's some, there's some tricky things out there for sure, but that's all I got guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Sorry about my squeaky chair. I need to get a new chair. It is driving me crazy. I don't even know if you guys can hear it in the video, but I got to get a new chair. But anyways, God bless all y'all. Have a great Thursday and I'll talk to you again soon.